Hey now, that's what's happening. Hey now. What's going on, everybody? How are you doing? Welcome to a very special edition of The Lab. I'm your host, Joshua Diaz. Good to see you guys. Good to be here. So last night went relatively, I would say it went relatively good. And for that, I'm thankful and grateful. Thank you so much for... Uh, everybody, and it, it is something that uh, we've been experimenting with and just kind of trying to get a handle on it. And so, it, you know, like I said last night, fantastic. I appreciate um, everybody who calls and is respectful. Um, now, we I have implemented a new sort of situation where if for some reason and i don't expect it to happen often but if it does if a call goes sideways we're ready for it we just are um and it will be preceded by um the call will be dumped and then you will hear this after and so you'll know exactly if the call does go sideways you'll hear this no, you don't like that call. I don't like that call. Not a very good call. There it is. That's what. <laughs> that is what we came up with. That is what we came. <laughs> that's what we came up with. So, uh, if for some reason I have to, I have to run you, which means run. Like if you get ran, run. Once again, this is what you'll hear. No. You don't like that call. I don't like that call. Not a very good call. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> now, now, don't think that just because you get on here and you say something I may not agree with or anything of the sort that, that I'm not... I'm not just going to run you, but, uh, you know, if it gets inappropriate, not a hand, I mean, you'll get hit with this. No, you don't like that call. I don't like that call. Not a very good call. Fair enough. Hey, now. So, without further ado, uh, let me see. And the number will change periodically. So... Let uh, let's throw it up there and, and see what happens, folks. Let's uh, let's give it a try. How is everybody doing today? Um, I hope everybody's fantastic. Yeah, still no F's and stuff. There's never any F's and stuff. Everybody knows that there's no F's and stuff. Um, and so we, yeah, <laughs> the flare. Yeah, I know. I love the flair. I'm I'm a huge flair fan, but you know, we just had to do it kind of different. I mean, you know, if if you get run, you get run. Don't take offense to it. Don't be don't don't let it bother you. It's just the hang up song. Exactly. Uh Gene, it is the hang up song. Get to know it and get familiar with it in case we have to use it. No. You don't like that call. I don't like that call. Not a very good call. <laughs> it, it, it speaks for itself, right? It just tell it, it speaks for itself. Um and so the number is at the bottom of the screen. Um go ahead. Uh the lines are open and I'll start taking them here in a second 
Uh, let's see here. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Hey, Josh. It's Sarah, also known as SB, and uh, first time caller, long time listener. Hey. I just had to say that. <laughs> okay. I like that. Um, you know, I had somebody I, call one time and say, um, first time listener, long time caller one time, and I never understood what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to do their typical radio thing. Absolutely. You know, putting it out there. <laughs> Okay, so my question is, did you follow the Tony Tote case? Um, the trial just ended last month, and uh, did you follow that or the trial at all? I did not, no. Uh, I mean, I'm familiar with the name, but I didn't, I didn't follow any of the details of the case. It was the most bizarre trial ever, and I just was curious about your opinion on it. And the case is absolutely bizarre, too. So I was just... I, it was it was expecting to be this long trial. You were thinking you were going into it, and it wasn't exactly a slam dunk for the prosecution. So it, it, when I was just watching it, I, it was like only a three-day trial. It was a family annihilator, basically killed all three. His wife, all three kids, lived in the home with them, killed the dog, and lived in the home with them for several weeks. Killed the and dog, too? Was, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. So th this isn't the one. So when did this happen? This happened about 2019, fairly recently. And okay. uh, he went on trial and it was in Florida. It was uh, Florida. The Disney, the Disney town in Florida, but he was a chiropractor and had his own, uh, or he, he was an orthopedic um, and had his own practice up in, I think it was like New Hampshire or yeah. something like that, but they had a second home. And uh, yeah, so he was actually under criminal investigation for the Fed, like a federal, like for basically charging um, patients when they weren't actually being seen. And so the Feds were actually watching him and that's how they caught him. But uh, they were staking out his home. And uh, so people, it's, it's just a crazy story. And then the history with his father. His father was suspected to have killed his mother. So oh, yeah. it was, yeah. So I don't know if, uh, I guess, so we're not, we can't really discuss that. We can discuss, we can absolutely was, discuss it. Was he found guilty? Oh, yeah, but, I mean, they, uh, the prosecution barely put in any evidence. I mean, it, it was it was literally a three-day trial for a triple homicide or quadruple homicide and killing the dog. And um, when he got up there and he decided to take the stand. Oh, and, yeah, always I mean, a bad idea, by the to, way. Oh, oh, yeah, but, I mean, he was... And he's so narcissistic. He got up there and, and, and was like fake tears, everything like that on the stand. And then when the when they cross examined him, they specifically had a woman do it and the contempt and just the snarkiness. And if you can find a video for um, when they finished, when the judge basically uh, got up there and, uh, you know, said, do you have anything to say before sentencing? He was basically asking the judge to overturn the sentence. And he was convicted on first degree murder, life in prison without parole for all three, you know, for, you know, for four people. And he was found guilty of uh, cruelty of animals, too. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. The the Anthony um, Tot. 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 Yeah, I, I, some people say Tot. Some people say Tot. It's both. It's some, some, tomato, tomato. <laughs> exactly. Uh, fact is, I mean, yeah, th these family annihilators, um, you know, it, uh, never, it never shocks me. The, the cruelty and what, what was the motive? Do you know? So, okay. They think, I mean, I have my personal opinion and then we have the, you know, what other people think other people, some people think it was because the he was getting ready to be basically put in federal prison yep. 
because I mean, he, he, I mean, it was some serious charges that he, his, just his narcissism was like, if I'm going out, I'm taking everyone out with me. And so that, that's one theory. And then another theory is, you know, I, I just think that he was sick of his wife, sick of his family. And they, it was, he, his wife was like chronically sick. I mean, she had Lyme disease, but he made it seem so much worse than it was. And he did a full confession yeah. right afterwards. Yeah, and recanted. That he I remember jail. That. What'd you say? Sorry. He recanted that confession. Oh, yeah. And then he blamed it all on his wife. And his wife's dead, so she can't testify. Yeah. But that, and that's the reason why I was really, you know, worried about them barely bringing in any evidence is like, what if the jury is the saying the prosecution isn't, you know, showing enough evidence to prove that it couldn't be the wife? Right. And it, this reminds me of the, there was a little known case in, I believe it was North Dakota. It was the gears up uh, Scott Western house. He was going to be indicted. Yeah. Uh, did you, are you familiar with that case? Uh, yeah, I'm a true crime junkie. <laughs> he, he, he was going to be indicted for, um, well, he was indicted f for stealing uh, grant money from the government. And before any of that happened, he went home and he killed his whole family. Uh and then burnt the house down, killed himself too. And it, it is really, it's odd to me that people just don't take personal, <clears throat> personal responsibilities. Um, you know, if, look, if he's going to get indicted for financial crimes, that's really on him. I don't understand the motive. I don't understand why you take your family out as well. Uh, it, yeah. it has always baffled me, but a lot of these, a lot of these family annihilators, and that is uh, a, a real term now that's being studied because it mm -hmm. has become more and more prevalent. A, a lot of men specifically feel that they own their family and that it's theirs yeah. to do with what they want. And it is very much the opposite. And, um, you know, I mean, this guy lucky he's even standing stood trial. I mean, he shouldn't even be here. Um, well, he, I mean, he said he was, you know, it, it, before and after in his first and second confession, he said that he was trying to kill himself, but he couldn't. And honestly, I think he was just a coward. Sure. He, I don't think he had any intention of killing himself. He is too narcissistic. I mean, if you watch the cross examination and then the actual um, uh, sentencing part, I, I mean, he is too much of a narcissist to kill himself. Mm. I mean, he was in jail losing weight and writing his father about it. And he said he wrote to his father this really long letter and said, don't share it with the media hint, hint, share it with the media because it was his second confession. And it was just, I mean, it, it, it's the family annihilator with the narcissistic kind of spin on it, I feel. Yeah. Well, which I think all of them kind of are. <laughs> I mean, nobody normal does that. And one of the things that bothers me about it is people try to hide behind that excuse of, um, you know, well, he had issues. Um, obviously he had issues, but, you know, their issues shouldn't become, you know, life sentences for everybody else. That that's what the the court calls uh, murder or th is they call them life crimes. And uh, unless you've really have you heard that term before? A life crime. Yeah, I'm not exactly in that. Not exactly in that sense. But I like that. So when they come up for when when they they come up for parole and the parole board's talking to them and they they say, um, you know, this is a life crime. Like you 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 have been charged with a life crime, meaning murder, and that's what that's what they call it. And it kind of re it, it doesn't kind of it absolutely paints the picture of what it really is. The, these are, these are crimes that never go away, you know, and this guy now probably, uh, is he in Florida? 
Yeah, he's in Florida. I was surprised they didn't. They the the death penalty wasn't on the table. Or I mean, I I, I didn't I, I didn't watch the pretrial hearings, but uh, you know, I don't know if the the jury didn't chose not to sentence him to death. I mean, if there's one case like that deserves table. it, and yeah, Florida exactly. is I mean, very it, active with with the uh, the death penalty, and they oh, do yeah, use it. How yeah. how it's is this man Florida. not? They I mean they put Casey Casey Anthony's trial was a death penalty trial. Yeah, Lori Val and Chad Davo's death penalty trial, which absolutely deserves it. But I mean, how I what I'm not understanding is like how is this a three day trial? How is this you know uh, not a death penalty case for killing four people and a dog? All your family? I, I, it just it blows my mind and. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, the prosecutors just didn't seem, I didn't, I, it just was, they were so dull. They didn't have enough information. They didn't, they had like four wit. they had like six people on the stand. That's all on the prosecution side. And, and you know, the, and then the defense side was literally just the defendant. Right. Right. It was crazy crazy trial and if, if anybody ever chooses to pick it up it's a fascinating one to go through just from the history his, his father to everything it, it's it's really an interesting one to grow that go down i kind of got in that rabbit loophole about it but just uh wanted to call in and talk about that but i um, you know i don't want to take up everybody's time oh, you're, but, you're totally fine I'll, I'll 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 worry about that i appreciate it though <laughs> um, you know, the, the thing is, I, I don't understand, you know, a lot of people have a diff different opinions about the death penalty and, um, that's fine, you know, and I'm not here to promote it one way or the other, but it is used so unfairly, like, meaning there are so many more people, like people that get it sometimes it's like, okay, well, wow. You know, but, and then then you look at crimes like this and you go, how, how was he not even put up there for that? How was he not yeah, I mean, even, you know, I, I, I don't know. There's, I don't there's get it. Some people that don't deserve it at all that you're like, how can they actually be put to death? How is it the death penalty case? And then other ones that, you know, in States where they still prosecute for the death penalty that it, that, absolutely deserve it and then they take it off the table you know I, i'm not pro or against i actually had to do uh i in school um in one of my classes we actually had a, a debate section in high school and we actually had to debate the death penalty and um we were given a side and i was given at that time i was completely pro death penalty and i was given the side of uh debating against the death penalty and I actually learned a lot about it so it it gave me a perspective of you know to dis discern between when cases actually deserve it and they don't deserve it and it really changed my mind about a lot of things mm -hmm. and um but you know I reserve it for the most heinous times in my opinion and that's what it's supposed and, to be uh, reserved for exactly and that's why I think it's important that juries, you know, that they, they pick juries that actually are not necessarily for or against, but they can actually discern and be impartial mm. when it comes into play. Right. Right. And, and the, the, yeah, the death penalty is a very, it's a, it, it's a very controversial thing. I mean, we're basically the only country in the mm -hmm. world that does it still. Uh, some states have just done away with it altogether, and some states have ramped it up. Texas, uh, Florida, uh, California surprisingly has it, but they never use it. Um, you know, and and a handful, you know, a lot of southern states still really. I mean, if you if you were honestly, um, they used to hang people in the old west for stealing horses. Uh, it, oh yeah. Now, do I think that that would be ex excessive today? I do. Um, but yeah. stealing somebody's horse was like taking their livelihood. So, you know, it, it's just, I get that we're not in those Western times, but 
you're, you're completely right. It is hard to know when and, and what, and, and the death penalty is just, but it would be reserved. Was the firing squad taken off, like just even in the sixties? Or I think they still have it. And, and I just yeah, read I about mean, a guy that wanted it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, it, it, it's only people don't realize how fairly recently some of these, you know, cruel and unusual forms of the death penalty were still in effect and could still be in effect in certain states. And I mean, it seems that, you know, the electric chair was, you know, still kind of being used, you know, out there, mm-hmm. but lethal yeah. injection seems to be across the board. Well, you know that companies way. are companies are now yep. refusing to sell yes to sell it to the to the the prisons so there's a shortage of that um and apparently big big companies now have some moral obligation to save death row inmates instead of taking care of their employees walmart Mm -hmm. in particular um and and, you know and, and Amazon, you know, I mean, a lot of their employees aren't treated well, but uh, they they have no problem sticking up for uh, people that the state has deemed uh, worthy of death, whether that's right or wrong. I find it ironic. Yet they pump out opioids that, (laughs) of course, get addicted to. They have no problem with that, but they have a moral moral uh, dilemma about providing. the actual drug and selling the drug to prison. Yeah, I know. That's why there, a lot of states have put the uh, death penalty that, uh, that uh, by means of lethal injection strictly off the table for right now until they can find a drug. And then you've got places like Texas that are like, give me the drug. Let's go. I don't care if it works or doesn't work. Yeah. You know, the alternatives that they can find. Uh, like, we don't kill them the first time. Let's get them the second time. <laughs> I mean, it, it is, uh, you know, what a what a somber thing to you know they and they invite the family of the victims uh yeah. t- to watch and the prosecutor and and, and it's just it, it is a, it sounds absolutely awful but unless uh, you've been in that situation where you've had you know family members wiped off the face of the earth people probably wouldn't understand why anybody would want to watch anything like that. And a lot of people choose not to rightfully. So, yeah. Um, but uh, it, it's never fun when you, when I say never fun, that just seems like a very dumb thing to say, but it's, it's just a horrible situation all around. But um, hopefully, I, I don't think that it, it's going to change. It just gets more convoluted by the, by the day, the, the death penalty, but yeah. um I think I would probably watch. I think I would. You know, when it comes down to it, if you took out my sister, if you took out my mother, if you took out, you know, some of my aunts or uncles, I would want to sit there and I would want to see you die knowing that you watch my family member die. And that that's my personal opinion. If it's somebody very close to me, I think that it would be another level of closure in seeing them hurt but that you know and it, i don't know i can't say that's just my opinion but if i go through it i might have a different opinion and that's why we can never say we can we can never say that we're going to do a certain thing until it actually happens to us we can all presume right. to know what we would do in a situation but you know, it, it, and I hope I never, I hope none of us ever have to go out there. I feel so bad for, I feel extremely horrible for victim families. A murder causes a ripple effect through so many lives that their lives will be ever for change forever. Their lives will be changed forever. It's, absolutely horrible it happened to a distant friend of mine and i mean i just saw the ripple effect through you know neighbors family members like cousins uh you know uh, classmates people that you know uh co-workers it's just it's a ripple effect through the whole entire uh 
friend, family, and community. It certainly is. There's no question about that. I, um, but what, yeah, what a great call. Thank you so much. And I appreciate you calling and being active in the chat. And uh, hopefully you, you uh, call back in. It looks like we'll probably start doing this once a week or something like that. So uh, I think it's a great idea and it's a good way to get to know your listeners. And it's a great way for listeners to get their questions and answers in live time. So thank you so much, I Josh. Agree. Thank and you. And well, people in the chat. This is a great group. Well, awesome. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Talk soon. Bye. Bye. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Hey. Hello. I'm sorry, I'm nervous. This is my first time. Oh, okay. Well, don't be nervous. Everything, uh, it's fine. What, uh, where you, what state are you calling from? Uh, Vancouver, Washington. Okay. Way, way up top. Correct. It's on your mind. So I have something to say. Um, Chris Madonna said something in um, a show with, um, sorry, I think I'm having a heart attack. Um, with um, Wesley Allen Dodd. And I went to school um, at Richmond where um, he was kidnapped. Hello? Yep, I'm here. And I went to school with his brother. Um, call drop. Hopefully she can call back, simmer down a little bit. You're all right. Don't have a heart attack. It's going to be okay. I know it's a little nerve wracking. You get up and start talking in front of people. It's all good. It's all good. You don't get wrong unless you're like crazy. And even if you're crazy, you don't get run. Just when you start saying, you know, crazy things. Um, <laughs> that's, I guess that's when you get run. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't know. Just, but uh, that last caller, SB, what a fantastic phone call and what a great topic. Uh, to, to, I mean, it really applies to to this day when we talk about the death penalty that's something that's always going to be around and something that we always talk about and always debate and there, it's going to be almost split right down the middle all the time i mean close to split right down the middle uh you never you never can entirely tell uh, well somebody's stance on it and that's for me, you know, you got to respect everybody's stance. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, Josh. How are you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? What, what state are you calling from? I, I'm calling from Tennessee. I'm about uh, maybe about two hours from the Wales. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, do you have a, do you have a screen name or you name anything you want me to call you or just call her? I have Jack. I don't care. All right. Jack. Go ahead. How how are you tonight? I'm doing all right. Uh, uh I just want to know if you uh ever followed uh the Daniel case, Joe Clyde. Joe Clyde. Um, you know, it sounds familiar. It's a, it's a, it, it was a little five year old boy. He had uh, autism and uh uh, Joe, yeah, Daniels Joe Clyde Daniels. Yeah. Yes, I have. Uh, no, I think the Wells think they can't do nothing, you know, without a body. And uh, that uh, they they hung uh, Joe Clyde, daddy and mama both, to the, both of them in jail. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, that's a very interesting thought because. I think a lot of people aren't familiar with no body homicides, even though that, even though they're used quite often today, uh, even in that case, and they don't necessarily have to have a body. It's just very, very helpful. Yeah, that's right. You know, I just hope, you know, 
near the bus down and tell where Summers at, just like the Daniels kid. How long have you been fo- have you been following it from day one, the Summer Wells case? Yeah, yeah, sure yeah. I have. And you don't, and I've been you know, watching. what's your opinion? Um, I say Kansas is the number one suspect in my opinion, and probably Grandma and H. I don't know about you know a lot of people talking about H now, and you know I don't. I don't know about him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't necessarily think that he was into anything. I think he knows more than obviously what's on the record. Um, and, and, and I hope so. And I hope that he hasn't shared everything. Uh, you know, when he sat down with, with, uh, Chris McDonough, um, he, he told quite a bit and who knows for the most part, I, I felt like he was, he was navigating the waters with his mother right there, which, is their God given right. And they should. Um, but I think he knows more. I just don't think that he's, I just, I have a hard time accusing um, anybody, let alone a minor without any evidence of anything, you know? That's right. I agree with you, but I, I can, I want to, Yeah, um, uh, I I I I got one thing to say about you, Josh. I'm proud you left that other channel. I ain't gonna call no name. All but right. You probably know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm you know, sure I have he, an idea. He's all, he always, you know, dropping all them bad words and everything. Chris was on the show, and Chris didn't like him too well. <laughs> well, I appreciate you uh, complimenting, and yeah, we really just were, you know. We worry about our own selves these days, and, and it's much easier that way. Uh, like-minded people stay together. And, um, you know, look, I, I have had my share of uh, issues when, I, when, when it comes to cleaning up the language. Uh, but, you know, you really got to know your audience. And a lot of people just don't, just flat out don't want to hear that. They just flat out don't. And especially in the demographic that we are in, they don't. And uh, no. people appreciate that. And I'm and thank you uh, for for saying that. You know, we just this isn't really the time or the place. You know what I mean? That's right. So you know, who who knows? Uh, you know, what he talk or you know he he uh, you know somebody might have their kids in there and everything trying to listen and to him and everything and he's coming off like that. Yeah, you know, I, I don't. You know, I ain't much. You know, I you know I ain't much called Christian person what, but you know I I kind of watch my language. You know, you know, around everything. It's one of those things. Like I, you know, swearing is one thing. And swearing in front of certain people is another. Uh, I sure wouldn't want to just start rattling off when my when my own grandmother is around. And if I have in the past, I, I've caught myself and she'll let me know in no uncertain terms uh, that it's inappropriate. So while people, you know, have every right to talk the way that they want to talk and, and they're allowed to do that. Uh, we just, we choose, uh, we choose not to over here and, and um, it, it's, it's easier to be with people that show respect and love and kindness. And uh, so I appreciate you saying that, Jack, thank you for calling. You're welcome. And uh, I, I, I would support the channel 100% there and, uh, and all right. Have a good night. Thank Bye. you, Jack. Appreciate it. And there you go. Jack from Tennessee in the house. Jack, awesome call. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Thank you, Jack, very much um, for calling. And we'll just keep we'll just keep going. Let's just let's just do it. Caller, you're on the air. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Mississippi. Mississippi. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. 
I want to tell you, and we've gotten this a lot. I love this. This is great. The open panel or call in. It's been um, nice, yeah. I have a request that's off topic. Okay. The dynamic and the dry comedy between you and the Clusinator <laughs> is something I can very much appreciate. And if it's okay to request a, maybe a once a week segment, I feel like a lot of your viewers would kind of put in on that. You know, well. that's so, that is something that has been discussed and hopefully that's something that we can definitely, you know, make happen right now. It's probably been about every other two weeks, but I'll let you know this right now, since you brought it up uh, tomorrow mm -hmm. after Chris's show, he will be here on the lab. Uh, so, so from four o'clock to eight o'clock tomorrow, you're going to have your fill of McFluff and uh, then, <laughs> then we'll, uh, I'll do a follow up with them. And, um, and that is definitely something that we have, have looked into and um, it would, it, as long as scheduling works out and, and, you know, it's just an hour and a half a week or something like that, then maybe that we definitely uh, could do that. But our, our plan is to do many more shows together and even ramp it up a little more going forward. So that is um, I, great. Yes. I love it. Isn't he and great? He's pretty busy with his record deal. Um, on that new rap video or yeah. label. Yeah, but, he's he's been looking at mansions and uh, the the Hollywood Hills apparently, and buying all kinds of wow. jewelry and ice. And uh, he's um, he's something uh, to to be reckoned with. I tell you that. You know, throw on a mustache and a Corvette and a Maverick, or not Maverick, Tom Selleck. <laughs> we need the shorts though. I think <laughs> you guys give me very much. <laughs> Perfect vibe. You start start ski vibe. start ski and hutch. I, sure. I was thinking more like cheers versus um I don't know, it gives me like Tom Selleck vibes. I mean I and I cannot remember this show. What is the show? Magnum PI. Corvette. Yes. It's like Magnum PI, Cheers, Start Ski and Hutch combined. It's I'd like to see your fluff, though. Wait, that sounds bad. Uh, well, I, I mean, when we're talking about fluff mm -hmm. and flow, it's all about hair. Sometimes I, sometimes right, I let right, my hair down. Right. Do you? You've never seen a show where my hair is down? I have, I have not. But I multitask, and often I listen while multitasking and I watch the screen. Yeah. So I may have missed it, and I will have to go back. Some, sometimes when I'm, when, sometimes when I'm feeling, um, dangerous, I, uh, throw the ear monitors on. It, it's easier to do this. So if I comb my hair and I don't know how people do it and it drives me nuts, but when, um, I comb my hair and then I put my headphones on, it, it just kind of compresses everything. You know what I mean? And I hate. I hate that. And so I put a hat on because I'm, because I'm putting my, over, you know, I'm putting my, uh, well, they call them cans. I call, I'm putting my cans on my head and it just seems to feel more comfortable, but every now and then I'll feel like, you know what? I may just, I may have just gotten a haircut or something like that. And then I'll, I'll put my, I've done it before. Uh, mo I think. I'm going to go back and watch. Have you ever watched? Uh, did, have you seen me on the interview room before? I have seen you on the interview room, and I and I tune in enough to look at the faces, and then generally I I turn my screen off and multitask and just listen more yeah. than anything. Okay, um, I, I believe that. That should say a lot that I don't have to visualize in order to to stay engaged, and that says a lot for y'all. And I appreciate it. What, we're old school radio uh, uh, fans. And so for the, for the people that, and I know a lot of people do just listen, which is fantastic. Um, 
that uh, is a great compliment, and I appreciate that. You, you guys have created this dynamic. Both of you separately are amazing, but together there's this dynamic that I envision that just works. And it all kind of cycles back to the vacuum hair, the flowy, flurby. I don't, I might, I might be telling my age. Remember <laughs> that? Uh, say, say it again. The flurby. Flurby, flurby. It's a, it was like a vacuum that cut hair. I'm saying it wrong. I've, I've heard of it. Yeah. I, I, I can't remember yeah. it, though. But um, I mean, if they're interested in a sponsorship, we'll, we'll talk for sure. And, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it just, you know, Chris has been, you know, he's had a, long, a lot longer time to comb his hair. And so it just kind of goes in the exact direction that he wants to every day. <laughs> and he can put his headphones on and it can press his fluff down. And when he rips them off, um, it, it goes right. It, it just, it stands right back up. So I don't, I don't really have that same, uh, luxury, I guess, but, um, I'm working on it for sure. I know a lot of Southern women that are a little envious of the height. What is it? The higher the hair, the closer to God? Is something, yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. I've heard that before. Well, thank yeah. you for calling. I appreciate it. Well, thank you all. And, you know, aside from you, I think that you have an amazing personality and dynamic with Chris. And I think it shines when you two are together. I'm not trying to. Thank you. Thank you. First, no, he's okay. very he he makes it uh, very easy. Uh, you, there's nobody has to carry anybody, and we can just. He's so knowledgeable, and um, and it it it, it has been a great dynamic, and uh, he, he's become and a, a harmless big friend. jab. I can appreciate the harmless jab on YouTube. It's not you know. Yeah, we have a good time, and and, and uh, we try not to, you know take it take it too far but you know the, 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 some people have been upset before uh you know when i've done voicemails or whatever and, and that's understandable i understand it's not for everybody and i understand that um some people may think that you know i'm making fun of him but i can guarantee you that he gives it back 110 percent, even when we're not on the air he still gives me crap so uh, well, even on the air, he does it very truthfully and slyly. It's the it's the little thing that it, he puts in, and and he does it with such a strategic uh, tone. Sometimes I don't really get it. Yeah, he takes he he uh like when he sat there and watched me eat corn dogs backstage and didn't say a <laughs> word until I had finished, and then he's like, "How are how are your corn dogs?" And I went. And I went, huh? And I looked up and he's sitting right there staring at me. And I didn't, I didn't cut my, my camera off. And uh, he goes, you sure ate those real fast. And I was like, yeah, I was hungry. And it's like, I don't think I've ever seen anybody eat corn dogs quite that fast. It's like, oh God, here we go. <laughs> and I knew, and I knew, and, and good for him, but I knew that he was going to bring it up on the air. I knew it. And he waited and waited and then bam. And, and people haven't stopped corn, uh, uh, screaming corn dog at me ever since. So, you know, he, he, <laughs> he does good That's stuff. Amazingly appropriate. Yeah. Y'all have a great thing. Yeah. And even outside of true crime, I think maybe you guys could even broadcast. It's just pop it. Yeah. Together. Yeah. Needed, Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you for uh, calling. Anyone can get him. Oh, thank y'all. You're amazing. And I, uh, like day. I said, this is something that we'll, we'll do more often. So I uh, hope you call in again. Absolutely. Thank oh. you so much for doing what you do. Thank you're, you. You're amazing. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. We're on a good streak here, folks. We're on a good streak of good callers. Um, yeah, we can, I guess we can get, uh, um, corn dog emojis. Caller, you're on the air. How are you? I'm great. Where are you calling from? 
I'm calling from Sonoma County in California. I'm familiar with the county. How's the weather? Great. Listen, I've been trying to get a hold of somebody and they don't want to listen. Well, you, you got me. So here's the thing. First, Candace has broken the law. So why haven't they arrested her? Who knows? Uh, what, well, what would you charge her with right now? Child endangerment and get her in jail and sweat her ass off. And when the child endangerment, which probably carries a, a four month sentence at the most, when they're done with that, then what do you do? You don't have four months to sweat her ass out. And she's got to talk. Here's the thing. Let me explain to Candace for you. Candace did everything for Dawn before her kids. Dawn and the drugs. Okay? She had her kids taken from her. Now she has nowhere to go. That's the deal here. As far as, as, far as Summer goes, who knows where she is by now? Okay, she'll turn up if if that's what's supposed to happen. But everybody's going around in circles. So here's point number two. Okay, why hasn't anybody used NASA satellites to check the property out? Well, I mean, I think didn't they they oh so you mean like a recording or something like a, from that day? No, NASA has satellites. Okay, there's satellites up all over. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're taking pictures of everybody all the time, whether it's us or the Russians or anybody. So you have to get with NASA to see if any satellites were taking the pictures. Right. I mean, it, it, who? but that's the thing. We don't really know if they have or not. Right. I that's mean, that's the whole thing. Yeah. So here's the thing. Somebody's in cahoots. Somebody's in cahoots. There, there's got to be somebody in cahoots. This so, isn't normal. So you think what, that, like, law enforcement? So, yeah, that guy, for instance, telling you you don't, they don't have anybody to charge, anything to charge her with. They took her kids? Let me tell you how to see it, a um, child services thing goes, okay? Mm-hmm. Here's how it goes. They take your kids and you go to a hearing. Okay. And see, and they don't want to take your kids from you. They come up with a plan that gets the kids back in the family. And, and they, well, yeah, it doesn't seem like that she's going to be getting the kids back. No, because she doesn't want them back. Well, that that is probably true, but she's also just not capable of it. And she I don't think she she, she will ever be capable right. of it. You're absolutely right. And I'm look, if they have if they have charges to bring, I'm I'm not saying keep her out of jail. If they can bring any charges at any time, I think that they will, but I think that they're going to wait to run into a wall with the investigation until that happens. And Instead of picking her up on, and I do not believe child endangerment is a ticky tack uh, offense. It is a very serious offense. And I also think you're exactly right. But I also think that the law sees it maybe a bit different than I do or you do. And no, not, not child endangerment. Well, what I mean, what honestly, what kind of child endangerment? I mean, I saw somebody go to jail for child endangerment not the other day and his bail was $2,300. Okay, just the fact that the, the summer's missing is one. And just the fact that how they were living, it's all a bunch of, it's so intertwined. But right now they do have charges. I'm sorry to say. Oh, I don't, I did, I don't disagree. I do too. Enforcement. Okay, here's the thing. They, they say it's a four-month thing. Um, I've seen people held 
for a long, long time in in prison. I just think she's that bad that she should crack. If she cried that easy on TV, on the Dr. Phil show, she'll crack. So, like, if if they get her in jail and sit and, and sit her there, yeah, nobody knows. Nobody knows how bad they sweat her. Well, the, it doesn't seem to be working with Don, but is that because you don't? So no, that's because Don. You have to understand. You are looking at. You are looking at people that have been uh, accustomed to living uh, to be to be mindful of the cops at all times. Okay, so it, they they could have had a plan. If something happens, this is this is what to do. Okay, it could have been planned. These people have lived up in the hills, kind of off the radar, doing whatever they wanted to do. Yep. Okay, and they've come up with a ways to keep away from the cops. Trust me. Even even the neighbors. So somebody does know something, but those mountain people have been up there a long time. So my, I guess my question is, so if they charge her with whatever they can through um, CPS and child endangerment, say that all adds up to a year and a half in prison, maybe two years at the most. No, you're, you're going to, okay, here's the deal. I'm almost sure there's been, just a minute. Um. Did you, you? Oh, okay. I think I can hear you. Sorry, I'm still here. That's all right. Go ahead. Um, no, I just got interrupted. Um, here's the thing. They have charges to charge her with. They haven't charged her. It, it, it doesn't take an idiot to figure out that she is child, child endangerment. I want to see her sweat. What's going to come out when she sweats? I mean, it's, uh, I, I don't know. And I don't know what, I, look, I don't disagree. I believe that she should absolutely be uh, locked up for the way that she treated the children and the house and all the, you know, the neglect. If they can, if they've put together a case and they're ready to pounce on it. But the thing is, um, it's one of those things. I, I understand the, you know, get them behind bars and they'll, you know, maybe they'll, she'll I don't sweat. I think they have to get her behind bars. I don't even think they have to get her behind bars. If they, I haven't seen any concentration on her. Well, people have if been. If they bring her in every day for three hours a day, you don't think she'll crack? Well, they heart? can't. Why not? They can't just bring her in whenever they want. She has a lawyer. For questioning? No, absolutely not. No, they can't. They cannot. They can't just con without her consent. They can't just show up and, and talk to her. She, I mean, Detective Pruitt said that they're not even, they're not even talking to him, and they have the right not to talk to them, unfortunately. And I don't think locking them up will do anything to to change that. I think that that's who she is. I think she's a cold-hearted. Uh, person who's not going to tell anybody anything because it's none of our business what happened to her daughter. That's the feeling that I get, but they can't just pick her up on a whim and say, you know, she has to agree to it. And I'm guessing uh, unless she's charged with something, uh, she's not, she's, go. she's not voluntarily going anywhere. Uh, then charge her and get her in every day for instance, get her in there every day. Well, see when she's in there, she still doesn't have to talk to him. Well, first of all, Don is a criminal, oh, I, and Don's not going to open up. Don's not going to say anything. I agree with that. That's how criminals work. Yeah. I okay. Agree. But and here's the deal with um, uh, 
here's, oh God, what, did, what, what else was I going to say? But everybody's just running around in circles, okay? If something happened to the little girl, it's very obvious. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Candace knows. It's but I have never seen her sweat. And I don't think she has a lawyer because who's paying for it? Uh, I, I don't know, but uh, it, it said it. I mean, it is. I think Don uh, retained a lawyer behind. Uh, now that I th- and I also believe I that she that, has a CPS lawyer because the the court does appoint think, you. One. No, 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 no. Let me tell you what CPS does because I've been in this situation. Okay, CPS will appoint, and not even CPS will appoint. The courts will appoint an attorney for the children for their best interest. That's how that works. It's not CPS appointing attorneys. It's the, it's the. Oh, I know CPS isn't going to give her an attorney. I'm saying that the court will, though. The court will give give Candace a an attorney because she needs legal representation uh, now, so she could be getting no, it only after. No, no, wait a minute. Back up. Only on a felony. Only on a felony. Well, and that's she's for, not charged, but she's not charged with anything. They took the kids, though. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I don't think she has a lawyer because somebody has to pay for it. And who's bringing in money right now? Uh, nobody. Okay. CPS doesn't give lawyers out. All right. The state does. Once you're, you've been, been arrested, you get a public defender. Yeah. Well, who's going to be putting, who's going to be an attorney on this? Who? And I think it's public record. The kids have an attorney. That's it. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if you're saying that she doesn't have an attorney, they say she has an attorney. Um, who's they? Uh, the who's sheriff. They? The ones that didn't arrest her for the crime. Sure, yeah, but that doesn't mean he did actually say that they they have lawyers and they're not cooperating. So I mean, we can That's say that we, you, yeah. I mean, we can say that they she doesn't have a lawyer, you. but we don't. Uh, I I'm assuming, and you know, maybe I'm wrong, but when, when did, why would she need a lawyer right now? I mean, she she's going that through a CPS true. case right now. You don't need a lawyer for CPS. I'm you don't sure need you. one, but I but, but you can get one. Yeah, who's going to pay for that? The state. No, that's not right. That's not true. Well, the I think it's not going to appoint you a lawyer. I've been there. Well, pu- a public defender. I mean, you, everybody has right no, to legal no, representation. No. Not in not in CPS. No, no. You don't have a right to a lawyer when you go to a case with CPS. Only when you're arrested but, and you're going to trial. Yeah. Well, I, I mean that. You can go get a lawyer. You can go get a lawyer. Yeah. You can. You don't have a right to one. You you definitely can, but. That's right. But what about? But I mean, are we? Right. Are you really that familiar with the law in Tennessee? Because it's different than yes. Sonoma County. No, this is California that I that I know. Right, but but uh, you know this could be. V- this could be very, very different. And they're not going to appoint lawyers. See, Children's Services does not. They, they, they won't even appoint a lawyer for the child because they're already taking care of the child. The courts appoint the lawyers. It's yeah. the function of the courts. It's not a function of CPS. Gotcha. Well, look, hopefully they arrest her for something soon. I'm on your side with that. No doubt. I don't know the, uh, I don't know the law and te- that'd be something that uh, would be interesting to find but out. Check on that satellite thing. Okay. Yeah, I definitely, I am. I am curious about that. And I'm also curious about, uh, the, the lawyer situation. So, uh, maybe next week, uh, call in and we can discuss it further. What I want you to do is, um, it might be a matter of public record. See, here's the thing. If you get arrested for a crime, you go to court and, and you're going to be defending yourself. So then you do need a lawyer. Okay. When you go to court with CPS, you're going to that 
same court you would for everything. It's not a different kind of court. They, you have, if you, if you're getting your kids taken away, you have to have broken the law. Okay. I agree. I All agree. Right, so you're going to go to real court. It's not a CPS court. Okay. It's regular judicial, same building. So if you're arrested, you have a right. Okay. Because you're breaking the law. So CPS doesn't give you the lawyer. I'm just trying to uh, educate everybody. Well, we're here. We're here. I'm, li- I'm listening. I, I, uh, but you're yeah. trying. You're trying real hard. It's just hard to watch. They haven't sweat these people hard enough. I, it's a, an old tactic. Look, I, yeah, it, it's hard to know what the ta- what what exactly is going on, which is what makes this case so frustrating. And uh, I totally you know, it's, understand. It could be. She, it could be she got she got high and. Something happened and she doesn't even know what happened. Absolutely. Or something happened and she does. It's, it's, she does or she doesn't. Yeah, I understand. Let's get let's continue this on the next one. I'll I'll do my homework and then we'll see where we stand there. Thank you for calling. You're welcome. Bye bye. And on to the next. Go ahead, caller. Hey there. Hi, how are, how are you? you? Good. Where are you calling from? Tennessee. Tennessee. I mean, that's that's the hub right now. We got a lot of people calling from there. Um, how are you? I'm good. Good. I'm what? good. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. What's on your mind? Good. Um, well, just just chilling with my dogs tonight. I have yeah. three of them, so oh. they're all lounged about. Um, I just wanted to say I'm just gonna go off of the whole um, kind of take it down on the lunch, I guess. I just wanted to say I used the term get gone the other day and didn't realize that I even used that phrase yeah. <laughs> because everybody talks about that and how, and I have pretty good grammar, I think, but I use it. It is something that people from this area actually do use, believe it or not. I, I, I agree with you, but how often do people <laughs> use it when their child goes missing? Oh, that's a different story. I agree. Yeah. And that's but what I don't like about it. it. No, definitely not. Um, but yeah, that's a phrase. That, and also come up gone is used. Like um, say something and notice something that's been stolen or taken and you'll be like, oh, well, my motorcycle or whatever came up gone, you know, so it's been taken. Uh, right um to me it's a it's a flippant term though it's it's one it's a term that you would say like i lost my shoe it got gone yeah i still have the other shoe i've been looking for it for two years but my other shoe got gone that would make more sense to me than saying that uh my daughter got gone you know absolutely yeah i mean i would never never but i'm just i've heard so many people just kind of beat that the horse has been beat to death about the whole get gone thing. And I get it in relation to a child. No, absolutely not. But mm-hmm. that would be you know, missing or whatever. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I, I've used it. So I have to say, I would love, love, because you, I love to watch your documentary. Oh, thank uh, you. Tremendously. So I, w- I would love it. And I'm not in any way trying to tell you what to do. I would love to see you do a documentary or something um, on since since summer's case is so hot. And, you know, um, a lot of times people have trouble understanding us because of the way we speak. And, um, you know, just of where our actual dialogue and the way that we speak came from. Um, in, you know, the Appalachian Mountains and how we actually, how, you know, our, our accent and the way we put our words together came from, and it was from the immigrants like that came from uh, Europe, like England and Irish and Scottish is a very strong background in, in Appalachia mm-hmm. when they came over and immigrated and came over and, you know, began to come 
into North Carolina from, you know, they came through uh, Ellis Island. I have family who came through Ellis Island and then, you know, they settled more inland, you know, that a lot of them were in North Carolina and then on into Tennessee and, and whatnot that um, there are still some great, I've watched a lot of documentaries on Appalachia and there are still people living very primitively. Um, and just to hear them speak is even, I mean, it's much, much, much more, I don't know if intense is the right word, but just, just uh, different than even the way that we speak here. Um, Would you have trouble understanding them? No, no. no. Um, just the phrases and things that they use, like glommed up or, you know. I mean, right, like, right. Probably nobody knows what that means. But like, I mean, just, you know, or over yonder, um, you know. So my uh, family's originally from Oklahoma and, yeah. uh, you know, Okies and. Mm-hmm. My, my grandmother used, says wash and taters and she says yeah. yonder and she, so uh, it sounds like my grandma comes from the Hills as well, I guess. She I does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of things that people, especially people that are now in their ripe old age, you know, that they still will say, you know, um, that are, um, definitely things that you know have been passed down from generation to generation but i don't think a lot of people realize that the way we speak actually did come from mostly from from what i have I've gleaned from the documentaries and stuff that i watched is like from scottish irish um folks that came over um here and then you know married into um you know native american people and um indians and and whatnot um and this, you know, it's just a big combination of things that you put it all together and then you've got this Appalachian dialect and it varies from where you're at, you know, in even in small places um, like Southwest Virginia is kind of different than even Northeast Tennessee, even though they're very close together. So, right. Um, right. But anyway, I just, I would, I'd, I'd love, like, even if you just watch, if, watch one of them and just, you know, kind of catch some of the phrases and like throw them up and see if anybody, not, not throw them up, that was a bad term, put them up and see if anybody would even know like what they meant. Yeah. You know, come up with some of the phrases that people say and be like, oh, do you even know what this means? And, you know, because there's some good ones out there um, that right now off the top of my head, I cannot think of any. Like but, when there's um, a, like when there's a dog in the yard and you go, get on out of here. Oh yeah. Get yeah, yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot of those, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my father had a lot of them, and right now, like I said, I can't think of them. But, um, my father worked construction all of his life. Well, he was a milkman for <laughs> when he was younger because my sisters used to tease me, they were uh older and they would tell me I belonged to the milkman, <laughs> and I really did. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> you know, but but then he worked, he worked, he was the man's man, he worked construction all of his life, and ran heavy equipment and delivered so milk it first he was a milkman and then he went on to work well aren't they from the that. aren't they from the milkman too uh yeah i guess <laughs> well as you say we have the same dad dum-dums yeah we do yeah yeah we do i'm not breaking yeah, any news to you am i they were born but they used to tease me about that so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. you're from the milkman you go well we're we're we all have Where the same from? yeah <laughs> we have all have the same parents you idiots <laughs> yeah we're all the same yeah all I know. Same yeah so, my sons used to say uh, stuff anyway, like that well thank uh, you for calling i appreciate it you're welcome and i'll let i'll let you go so somebody else can call in all right thank you very much for calling have a good night bye-bye all right we're cooking we're cooking it is uh am i i want to say to homegirl thank you for joining i appreciate that thank you for being here um okay here we go I think they just hung up. I think the caller just hung up. Yeah, we would. <laughs> we we always gave my grandma crap 
uh, about stuff like saying abo instead of elbow. I don't know if that's an oaky thing or she had a speech. She had a speech impediment. Caller, where are you calling from? Hi, this is Josh. This is, yeah. Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. What can I do for you? Uh, I was wondering, and I love your show, and I also agree with the last caller. Your documentaries are wonderful and would love to see more. Thank you. Um, I wanted to talk about, you mentioned it yesterday during your, when you were doing the soft launch, yep. about the Robinson family. Yes. Daniel and yes, David. Daniel. Yes. Okay. And I've been fascinated by that case only because, I mean, that dad has been unbelievable and has come up against so much, um, I don't know, resistance, I guess, and had to go out there and had to do everything starting from scratch on his own. Um, and I wanted to share, I don't know, I had given to the GoFundMe and the dad just sent out a group letter um, yesterday, as a matter of fact, or Friday, maybe. Yeah, yesterday is Friday. Okay. And I, I know that you and Chris both did a great job interviewing that dad. Okay. And you had said you would be interviewing him again. I've never interviewed him. Chris has, but I have spoken to him, but I've never okay. interviewed him okay. on. I've never interviewed him on my show, but I have, I have spoken with him and I, I am looking to do that. Yes. Um, well, it's just, I, uh, is everyone in chat familiar with that case? Because I found and you probably from what you've noticed a lot of above 16 or 17, you know, they don't get, attention the same way that little kids get yeah you're right you're right about that um and um his letter sounded just like him so if you're familiar with gofundme oftentimes it's a friend that does it but it seems like that dad has done everything literally from the minute he got a phone call his son was missing on his own right right he, yeah, you know, it's a really heartbreaking situation because he, he feels like that they're not listening to him. And Correct. I remember him talking about the local police. Yeah. At the beginning. And, and by the way, that, that, what he is doing is the absolute normal way that I mean, if there is a normal way to be of looking for. Yeah, be, yeah, you would you would just tie, you would never stop looking for your kid, and he has been so dedicated, and yeah. it's heartbreaking yeah, to know that he feels and and look, he's not going to feel good about this situation uh, unless until his son is returned home. Uh, alive and yep. you know yep. who who knows Absolutely. if that is going to happen or not i don't know uh, i hope Would so you mind me reading the gofundme response he just put out go it for sounds it sounds just like him um okay so i'll put on my reading voice um it says please help find daniel hi i hope that all is well with you thank you so much for the love and support that you have given to this cause I appreciate you. Because of you, I can remain in Arizona to fight for my son. Also, thanks, because you are helping me continue my search. Even though I am pausing my searches currently, I can produce flies and other means of getting the word out about my son's case. Because of you, I know that despite the pain of not knowing where my son is, I have you by my side helping. God bless you. So this is what was sent out. To anyone that had contributed to the GoFundMe. He then went on to say, <clears throat> I will continue to do everything that I can to find Daniel. I'll, I will get the forensics done and the organized search is up and running again. I will find my son. Again, thank you for your donation. It's amazing people like you that make this world a great place. Be blessed. And what touched me so much about this particular case is exactly what you said. I can't imagine not doing what this father is doing. 
yeah. to leave. I think they're from Georgia or North Carolina or one of the Carolinas. He literally went out there and started from scratch with his own, I think, PI person, forensics, because there's two theories right now, I believe. Um, one is foul play based on some forensics with the brakes in the Jeep out in that desert um, and foul play involving cartels. I don't know anything about that area, so I can't speak to that. Or an accident and he wandered off, but I can't think that he'd wander off, but also it's desert, so I don't want to get too graphic, right? But what happens to people in the desert, I don't know. Yeah, you there? Did I say that? Yes, I'm here. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh -huh. No, you're good. Oh, were you going to, I, what was the, did you say the second theory already? Oh, um, the first was foul play, either the vol either, either involving something with work, his work as a geologist. Then there was also something thrown out about cartels. I don't know anything about Arizona or Rod. Oh, okay, desert. gotcha. And my other thing is if it really was an accident, you know, when he got disoriented and wandered off, how, um, I don't want to be graphic. I, don't, I just don't know what the desert does to people. Sure. That it disappear in the desert. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't know what kind of, sh I mean, if we're talking about the, you know, pres uh, preserving of a, a body or bones, I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, I don't want to get it is, but I mean, it is something that you do have to consider, uh, because mm -hmm. who, who, who really knows? And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it, it, when you bring in, you know, the, the foul play theory, that's when things just open wide up. They're just all over the place and yes. you never, you never really know. Uh, what what somebody was in not saying that this young man was into anything nefarious i don't know uh, i i have no, no clue i have no clue but you don't know somebody's backstory you don't know um you know i've known people that went off into the woods and tried mushrooms and it didn't go so well not saying that they didn't disappear but uh, that, you know it did fell off something right, right. or you know <laughs> I, I i don't know i don't well, anything, know any wild terrain like that i think would be very difficult yeah like to worry and to find out or ever get answers unless you, you, you get lucky or someone comes across like a hunter but ravines and deserts and things like that yeah i just spoke to him just the other day and um well, so you mentioned it yesterday when I listened to the replay yeah. of your first soft launch of this. So I thought, oh, that's so funny because I was thinking of this for tonight. Yeah, it is. It's is something that needs more attention. And we're definitely, especially here. And I know that Chris has already covered it yeah. and, and will continue to. Um, it's something that deserves more uh, coverage than it has, is, has gotten. And this man and his son, uh, it's, it, it has uprooted everything that he has and God bless him for, uh, doing what every parent should do. And that's what he's been doing. Well, that's the difference. I think the reason everyone is so, I actually found YouTube because of Summer Wells. I didn't even know that YouTube and crime and all that existed. Um, true crime. I knew podcasts and things like that, but a lot of those are um, past cases or missing cases and things like that. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, the Daniel case, I mean, that's what you wanted. I think people want to see from CW and DW when we didn't see it. And the more you find out about them, the more, you know, just ridiculous the whole thing becomes and the bigger circus it becomes. And it's just, it's like, how can one just disappear and nobody have an answer for people he absolutely yeah i mean comparing anybody to to don and candace i mean you, you don't have to do much to be uh, considered doing doing more than them because they've done absolutely nothing they the the they couldn't be further apart 
the the two. Exactly. The, I think the that, two that parents. dichotomy is what's caught my attention, especially with the Robinson case. Right. And you know, he has a growing son and he's gone across the country to do work that basic work that he shouldn't even have to do on his own. Right. And he's raised this money and he's gotten forensics and PI people and even had the Jeep examined. The police hadn't even examined it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, just amazing to me to, to get all that done. And the other thing, too, is he's retired military, I believe, the father. Mm-hmm. And I think whether he served our country, worked for our country, and he can't even get any help, you know, from law enforcement saying that you know, 100% true, which we don't know, but I, it sounded like it at the very beginning, um, makes it even more upsetting, I think, to me personally. It's just... It is, it is, he, it is you know. upsetting, and I, you know, I, I, it's one of those things I feel like, if, even if, if, which he should, he got all the help that he needed, and you still don't get the answers... He's going to, I mean, it's never going to be good. He's always going to be, you know, upset. He's always going to be heartbroken. What more could I have done? What more could others have done? And, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't, you know, I'm not privy to everything that law enforcement did or didn't do for him, but until Mm -hmm. I don't think I would ever be satisfied either. I mean, we just had a caller not that long ago that was like, you know, why isn't Candace locked up? I mean, and while I agree with the sentiment, um, who knows besides them? And, and I think a lot of missing, a lot of missing people's cases feel like law enforcement didn't or hasn't done enough. And law enforcement, when it comes down to it is limited, unfortunately. I mean, they do not have unlimited resources. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's fresh. Never had a missing Saracen case. Yeah, a lot of small towns just have never experienced. You know, it's not like uh, San Diego or uh, Los Angeles, New York. People go missing from those places. It, you get lost just walking down the street. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's it's just one of those things where it, they may not. They could probably pour all the resources into it that they have, and I'm not saying they have or they haven't. But it will never be good enough because until the result turn until there are some results, it, it won't it won't matter, unfortunately. Yeah. And uh, no, I just, I wish him yeah. the best, uh, obviously. And any and it's just I couldn't imagine, and I don't want to imagine what that feels like. Has anyone told you this equipment? Sound, you sound exactly like you do when you talk on youtube <laughs> no no uh, d- yeah do i that's good it i think exa- okay it, yeah there isn't any reverberate there isn't any echo there isn't any change in your speech at all uh, you sound exactly the same well i so appreciate that doing well. thank you very much and and i have to tell the chat um because they wanted me to call in but i didn't tell you where i was from at first because i was trying to fake slow talk so you can't figure out where i'm from <laughs> Uh, I mean, you have you have you have a, a East Coast accent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I told the chat I would call in, and you have a wonderful chat. And um, also, I do love the documentaries when you do the premieres. Thank so you. I hope you haven't left that in the dust. I have not. I have not. You said that was your first love, I believe. It certainly point. is. Yes, yes, it is. And. Um, I, I will be getting more of those out and have started on some others. It's just, uh, you know, it's a lot of work. It, it's a lot of work and life gets in the way. And, um, uh, we, you know, we're just maintaining and, and doing what we can, but th- there will be more on the way. So I appreciate your phone call. Thank you very much. Well, well thank you. All right. And have, have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Hi, caller. Hi, how are you doing? I, I guess I got through. How are you doing? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm from New Jersey. I'm just um for first call. Thanks for taking my call, Josh. Yeah, I don't yeah. I'm a little. Ugh, I'm nervous like the other people, but um, you know, my my um 
my issue with Candace is that she's such a druggie mm -hmm. and she's such a drinker and a smoker um, that if, if she really, they've really put the heat on her, she may not live. And, you know, she may do something to herself and um, she may not, we may never see justice if she does something like that. So um, that, that's one of my biggest opinions um, about that whole situation with um, Candace. But um, I just, I, I agree like the other caller that um, I don't, I don't understand why nothing was done about this, these kids. You know, I'm a nurse and if I saw that, oh my God, if I saw how kids, if I saw a kid like, um, Summer, and I work in a school, walk into the office and she was, you know, like that. And we found out about the um, living situation. Of course, we'd have to be reporting that and something would have to be done about these kids. So, so none of this makes any sense how these people got away with this year after year after year. And I did case management in the hospital in, in New York. I used to live in New York. I did in big in this big city hospital they did the case management if we saw a house like that if we send in a, a, a social worker to do an evaluation on a home that looked like that let me tell you that baby would not be going home from the hospital that would not be a safe discharge plan for a child if they saw exposed wires nails sticking out cigarette smoke around kids the drinking the drug exposure that that you you wouldn't be able to send kids home like that yeah. So I don't, I don't get that. I don't really not get that. And in addition to that, um, you know, when they talk about these counties and they, they don't have money and they, uh, in, where I grew up, I grew up in Connecticut and in 1960, they totally dismantled the county system of governments. Every county should be, be um, operating on the, in the same way without all these little separate governments that are dictating how these cases are done. They need to have a standard of like investigation and what they do in each, in all parts of the state. And because Tennessee has 95 counties, that's an awful lot of counties to have to, to, to keep track of. And if they don't have the funding in Hawkins County, they need to ask the state for help. And I want to know where governor Bill Lee is and their attorney general is if they can't manage their county and do a proper investigation and put the, the resources into CPS to, to keep their kids safe. It does not make sense to me. Yeah. So, you're, you're, well, you see, you're right in, in the fact that those kids had been failed repeatedly by multiple agencies and that they were being looked into, but no action had been taken. Uh, which is I'll, I'll, baffling, right? But but all I can say is if I if I'm if I'm a nurse, I'm a nurse. So so if, if I if I knew about these, if I knew about the case, I had kids like that in my school. And we saw signs and symptoms. Guess what? Of all these things, I I could lose a license. Anybody, the doctor, where are the? I know that they might have gone to the, not have gone to the doctors, but when when the child goes to a doctor, they check them up and down. At that age of five years old, they're checking. The privates, they're checking all of this stuff. So some, I, I want to know what doctors were seeing summer too. Well, maybe you know? it's what if, what if she hadn't been seeing any? You know, well, supposedly, supposedly, I heard she got immunizations. So when when they go and they they really should be doing um the um you know you know you know a, a real um comprehensive exam. You just don't go in. And, and take take just give shots. You have to, you know, and if they haven't had anything on record, they they really they really should be giving a child a physical. And if the parents refuse a physical and they don't want the kid to be examined, then you call um, the, the the agency CPS if they're not going and doing the proper care for the child. And um, you know, it just doesn't make sense to me. And uh, you know, that's that's where I'm going to end it with that part. But um, as far as the Toad case, to they were from Connecticut. That um. That, that the guy that was, they were confused with the state that they, they were from, um, where the guy had his physical therapy practice in Colchester, Connecticut, because actually I grew up there on top of it. So I, and I, it's funny because I went to the same college as um, Tote, and we were in this, I, I must have walked the same hallways as the guy because I graduated a year before him in the B, their BSN program. He was in a physical therapy program. So it's just weird how things hit home and that, 
you know, that I was like, when I was watching part of the trial, I said, oh my God, he went to my school. That is like, it's just unbelievable when you see trials and the things hit home with you. Yeah. But um, let, I just, I, I, go ahead. Let me just tell you this. this. This is my hope. And I agree with every single thing that you said. And what a fantastic uh, perspective that you have. My hope for this is that they bring when and if they can and and I if if they can't bring any charges you know within the the summer's disappearance because they don't have enough evidence um and I hope that's not the case but I hope that they just absolutely bring the full hammer of the law down on their heads and that they stack every single charge that they possibly can on these, these people that are, that were responsible for these children and failed them just like they did in a previous life with their other children. I hope that they never see the light of day. Terrible. I I just, I feel so bad for them, for those children. It's like, I have a child daughter and I'm like, when I'm, you know, when people get mad at these YouTubers, like, you know, I know that there's been a lot of controversy and stuff over them. But if God forbid something happened to my daughter, I would want people looking for her and fighting for my daughter like they're fighting for this child. Me too. too. Um, it's not, none of it makes sense. So, um, and, and talking about the accents, it's like, you know, you, I, I, I they, they were talking about all the um, Southern accents. You go all over here where I, I live in New Jersey, but you go down to South Jersey, you hear different accents where I grew up in Connecticut. We would hear like New York influenced and different other accents, but, but it's, but it's, just, but we all, it's all cool to listen to everybody and hear their perspective in all different parts of the country. Because like, I don't know that culture down South because sure, I grew up either. in Connecticut and, and I'm, I'm, I'm Jewish and we are all European and, we never had that kind of, um, you know, influence of, of hollers. We had more like, um, you know, more city life and more ur- suburban life and, and really such sort of snobbiness of like being, everybody had to go to college and you had this real cosmopolitan attitude. And um, so it just, to me, to see that different culture is really different because I've never been to that part of the country yeah, ever. Right. And it's just, that we, you know, sometimes I, I, I feel judgmental of people that live like that, you know, and I understand people are poor and I, you know, I don't have the most money in the world either, but um, I just think that there's no excuse for the way they treated their children. I bet you, Don, I bet, and, and, and no, this is not insulting in any way, shape or form, but I bet you Don made more money than you and I both. Probably. And, they probably and, didn't, and probably didn't even report it because I'm sure a lot of it was cash. Under the table. He, they, they weren't, they weren't poor. No, he, he no. worked, he worked and he, he, the, you can say whatever you want about Don. He's all of those things. Uh, he went up and he got to work every day and but, it was, he was a functioning money. working drug addict, alcoholic, but, but you know, but I'm telling you, if you, if he, if he, if he went up here to, and he made that like $1,500 a week up where I live in New Jersey, you'd be poverty impoverished. You couldn't even live up here. Because taxes on your house would run you over twenty thousand a year. Who would want them in that area anyway? No, I'm, I'm uh, no, but you would be run out of town because the, the pe- people like around here. It's like I'm not to be snobby about health things, but no, I'm, it's not acceptable. Like if you see people smoking around kids around here, you'd be you'd be like looked at like you're a pariah. Cause, uh, you know, there's just more health consciousness. There's more. You know, they don't the, the smoking. You know, they don't allow smoking as much around here in public places it's just a different it's it's real i don't know it's snooty elitist i I can't explain it's like a different feel up here though i'm a conservative well you know he that well that's the thing is that that house uh give i mean gives a whole new meaning to a flop flop house trap house uh i would let me tell you something i'm such a germaphobe like I would want to wear a hazmat suit in there and decontaminate because I would be worried about getting like some infestation from being in there, you know, with the kids had scabies and they had, had body lice. 
they, I'm sure they have that. They've, I'm sure they were such dermatological issues. Um, I, I swear those kids must, you know, though they've eaten, eaten dirt and they probably have a lot of immunity from their germ exposure, but but the fact that they were exposed to all those environmental toxins and pollutants from their parents' habits, uh, I, I would think that they that they would be some sort of have immunosuppressant, mm. you know, immunosuppression, because I'm an RN, so I would think a lot of that would be going on at the same time. I, I don't believe you need to blight all children off every day and purell them, but you but you certainly do not expose them to those those things. You yeah. know that they would breathe in secondhand smoke. I'm really against that. But, oh, I don't. You know, I don't. That's my, that's, that's my pet peeve about the smoking. And I know a lot of people smoke, and they get mad at me when I say that. But I, I really believe in being a child advocate, that so that they, so that children do not get secondhand smoke and asthmatic, um, you know, exacerbations or developments. And it, it, and I'm sure, and I'm, and those kids all started their life under a cloud of smoke because look at how much she smokes and Don smokes. You know, and I'm sure that she's had issues, and I, and I don't know if that had anything to do with her um, be, being sick when she was, you know, with, you know, there are all the theories about her, um, you know, being, you know, not well and, you know, et cetera, you know, from when she was um, in the swimming hole, as if she had respiratory issues, who knows? I don't, I don't know, but I just, I'm just, spec- as we always are speculating, but I really feel that um, she, she, you know, she should be charged with something there has to be something well wow. and, and and they're not following their laws there in, in tennessee and they really and, and, and again i'll say that that county needs to be looked at by the state they need to be in a big audit of every case that they've had and all the corruption needs to be swept away like drain drain the swamp in 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 hawkins county let me tell you yeah well I, i'll tell you this there, there is a million um there's a million reasons why you can keep your house clean and still be poor. Of course. It's of course, it, like, people are allowed to be poor. It's nothing to be ashamed of, but you know, keeping your house clean really doesn't have much to do with that. No, it doesn't. No, it's just, it's just that they don't, they don't care. So soulless and heartless. That's those are the two words I could think of. I agree. Soulless and heartless. I agree. And no with you. bond. The mother didn't have a bond. It did, probably did not bond with her at all. Yeah. You know, that, not whatsoever. Terrible. Have a good night. Thank all you right. for calling. I appreciate have it. Have a take care. Bye. Bye bye. Another great call. No, she was not snobby. She was telling us where she's from and how she was raised. It's just different in places, folks. That's. That's all it is. There's nothing wrong with that. Great call. Thank you. Uh, Caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Hi, Josh. Good evening. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I love your show. I love your platform, and I appreciate the dedication that you show uh, to the Summer Wells case. Thank you. And also that the interview room shows to that case. Um, that said, I'm curious if uh, you and Mick Fluff might possibly have any intention of teaming up to really become the voice of missing people and, in particular, missing children to really, really expose what goes on in those uh, quarters of our society and um, give people information on how they can help and support causes to uh, really expose those criminals in those areas. So, you know, yes and no. Um, You know, we have plans to do certain things uh, and have a couple cases that, you know, we want to work on together. Um, Now, you know, he's kind of a nomad and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of grounded at the moment. And, you know, anchored with a family. So, yes, like I said, hopefully that we can get something regularly, you know, scheduled where, where we're constant. When I say constantly uh, doing stuff, but, um, you know, to be to be 100 percent honest with you, I'm, I'm a fan just like uh, like everybody else. I like 
just listening to his show sometimes. And, um, uh, I, I don't know exactly what the future holds for me here on YouTube or in, in general, but, uh, I would like to do much more work with him and people just like him. Um, he's, uh, always been good to me. And I know that, uh, a lot of people enjoy what he does. Me being one of them. Very much so. You know, his, his background, his years of experience and his ability to just, uh, what read the room, read, read the cards, if you will. Um, you know, some years ago I worked with law enforcement as a civilian, uh, much by happenstance, uh, but we, uh, as a team helped expose a child pornography ring on the East coast that led to a larger ring, uh, internationally. And so what I enjoyed about that was just being able to expose what goes on uh, again, what goes on in those quarters and uh, learn a bit how people can help. I think a lot of people are very interested in those type of cases uh, and they want to help, but they may not know how to help. And so I'm hoping there's some type of platform uh, that we could all look forward to, uh, to get that information, that type of information. Yeah. Yeah. I am a, the, being a child advocate is one of those things where uh, it it can take a toll on everybody. And so as much as we look, I was, I was in a gas station today and I saw a couple little kids and a little, she was probably four to five years old, blonde girl. Uh, the first thing I thought of was summer Wells. Uh, and I was mm-hmm. like, I, I don't even think that, it's necessarily a healthy thing to do. Uh, I mean, I snapped out of it relatively quick going, you know, you know, I didn't, it wasn't like, I said, Oh yeah, that's no, that that's not what it was. It was the Kate, these cases stay on your mind. Uh, and, I, and I have regretted, I've, I've regretted letting myself, um, get so involved where I, where, you know, Don Wells was calling me and mm-hmm. trying to kind of push his narrative on, on me. And, uh, it kind of became, and that's where the letter that I did, I don't know if you've heard it before, but I wrote a letter, uh, to summer and, and that, that was like the therapy for me. It was, the kind of therapy that I needed. So, um, yes, it, it, you know, but going full fledged at it is really, really, uh, a, a tough thing. It's not something that I, I don't want to do. I have, uh, bef- ev- well before the summer Wells case, you know, I worked with, um, victims witness, uh, uh, victim witness, uh, out of, out of California and, you know, but it's, it's, uh, it's a worthy cause. It's just, it does weigh on you. You know what I mean? I I do. I understand what you're saying. Just from, from my experience, uh, there were many sleepless nights just trying to comprehend in, in my, in my universe, in my heart, how these people can even come about how they can do what they do and yeah it it, uh it can lead one down a very dark path that that weighs very heavily so there's definitely two sides there there's a need to uh bring more light to it all more exposure to it all and then there's a need for each individual to maintain their sanity I, I understand. Yeah. See, I take, I take a lot. I mean, I, the cases that I talk about, I, I take to heart and, and uh, you know, when I spoke to um, the, the couple out of Canada where their child was missing and um, Ehler was the name, Dylan Ehler. And 
it after I was done with that conversation, and I don't know if you've seen it, but it's up on my page. I, I interviewed the father and we talked for about two hours and it was absolutely exhausting. And I can't imagine what it's like on his end. You know what I mean? That, that w- as, as, as terrible after as I felt, he, they're going through something that I couldn't even imagine. And, uh, I don't have a missing child and I, and I hope to never be in any situation associated like that whatsoever. And, um, so, you know, I do, I'll do all I can it, when people want to use my platform to tell their story about their missing loved one, um, I, I am fully uh, okay with that at any time. Um, but uh, sometimes you just, it, it's kind of a gas and, and, and break situation, if that makes any sense at all. Oh, it does. Uh, I understand. But what you just said that, you know, when people have uh, a case of a missing loved one that you would help provide a platform, that is very much appreciated. And uh, again, thank you for all that you do, uh, keeping these various cases uh, in in uh, public awareness. Wow. Very, very much appreciated. And I hope you'll continue. Thank you very much. And thanks for the call. What a nice call that was. Um, let's see here. Hello, Josh. Hey, caller. Where are you calling from? From East Tennessee. I'm Debbie. I got through last night. Oh, hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Listen, I just had to call and tell you, you know, the lady was talking from Tennessee about her accent, you yeah, know? Yeah. And I have to tell you guys this. It's on my lot of side. I have a neighbor, and he's almost 80, and he was having some mental issues, and so he went to the doctor. And the doctor was sort of like 35, 40 years old, and he says, what what can I do for you today? And he said, my straddles is killing me. My <laughs> straddles is killing me. And he kept saying this over and over. And he said, sir, I don't know what you mean. He said, my straddles. This went on for like 30 minutes. The doctor had to go out and call his wife and ask her what she meant about straddles. <laughs> and it, what is that, his butt cheeks? The, the straddles is your things between your legs. The straddles, you know, like you straddle a horse. Interesting. And we say uh, our straddles is hurting us. Well, this young doctor never heard that, but I had to call and tell you about that. I went right to butt cheeks. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it was cute. But he had to call the doctor to call the wife and said, I have your husband. Could you tell me what's wrong with him? He keeps saying straddles. <laughs> she told him he was having some kind of issue. <laughs> but I laughed. He came down and told me that, and I laughed so hard, Josh. And then that lady was talking about our accents and our dialect. I said, oh, I've got to tell Josh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it cleared something up for me because I, I, I went to the, I went to the yeah. wrong side. <laughs> I certainly Before did. I Can I ask you how you come up with the lab? The lab. Yeah, sure. You know, um, so <laughs> I had like 10 different, ideas and tried a few different names uh but so the lab like in a laboratory is when you kind of just there's two different there's two different forms of it but you kind of dissect things you yeah. and, and break it down um and also you create and in this area that i'm in you only see this um i have i have more room over here uh, this is where I, this is my lab. I create, um, here okay. and I always, okay. I have. So it's funny though, because, uh, that's kind of became my name on, uh, <laughs> on, on YouTube. People call me the lab and, oh, yeah. uh, and I'm fully comfortable with people calling me that I have no problem with it, but I do still find it funny when, you know, people say, Oh yeah, that's the lab. That's it. And, and I like, I'd like it, trust me, but yeah, it is a place that I create. It's a, a place that okay, I, 
figured that out. So I, I wanted to make sure, but I figured that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Again, I'm going to tell you, you and Chris are my favorite, favorite people. Wow. And I just love you guys. And I hope your grandmother is doing well and your family. So thank I'm you. not taking up your time, Josh, but oh. I do love you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thanks for calling again. It's good hearing from you. Okay, uh, my, my, my straddles are starting to get sore myself. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Joe. Good night. <laughs> Let me see. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, we got another call coming in here. Let's see. What time is it here? I think we got time for a couple more. I think we got time for a couple more. Oops. I think I hung up on that person. We may not have time for another one. Uh, no, we do. We do. I was sure that we definitely do. And thank you, uh, KP Baz, for that super chat and li a little bit as well. Thank you so much, and, and um, Homegirl, for becoming a subscriber. Thank you. And go ahead, caller. Hello, Josh. This is Jess. I'm the mystery maven. <laughs> hey, nice how's it going? It's going good. I tried to call a little while ago and I didn't get through and I'm sort of half asleep, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I wanted to call in um, and to say that, first of all, I think you're doing like such good work on your show and it's always such a pleasure to look forward to tuning into you <laughs> when you, you go on um, and, you know, everyone in the chat and the mods and everybody is just so nice and so welcoming. And I always learn something. And I just think that you are one of the few of these days that, um, you know, that you have a lot of integrity and I just really admire the work you're doing. And I appreciate what you're that. Doing. I appreciate that very much. And Thank you. And I always appreciate it's your it's commentary true. and the comments that, you know, uh, that you, um, put in the chat. You're very, very smart. And, um, I sometimes, when you throw that up there, you, you know, you know, the law better than I do. And so I always appreciate your contributions and, and thank you for um, oh, well, supporting and, and being here. I, I always do appreciate my pleasure. that. Thank you. Yeah, sure. And, um, and, you know, while I'm on the phone and one of the reasons why I also wanted to call in was because I know there was the caller earlier um, and she spoke about CPS and summer wells and, having an attorney and, um, you know, all those different issues. Oh, I remember the conversation and, vividly. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you do. So um, what I wanted to just say is that what I find troubling about the case, and it's something that I suspect is complicating issues. And I also think there's a possibility of this because of the words that the DA used when the DA had said that there were, um, I'm trying to think what he said. Implications. There was some kind of an implication. Yes, exactly. Um, about the, the family law case, the CPS case. And what I think is important to remember is that, first of all, the standard in a case with CPS is lower than a criminal case. So the evidence they're going to collect is of a lower standard than that of a criminal case. So you have two different competing standards of evidence right there. So each agency is doing something different. Okay. So while they might be coordinating efforts, they're each responsible, obviously, like we're two, two different paths. And what happens is in these cases is that um, if you're brought up, you're a parent and you're brought up on, you know, charges of or investigation for abuse and neglect, what happens is the focus of a CPS investigation is going to be on the welfare and the safety of the child. And they're going to want and expect the guardian or parent to talk to them and to be open. And that will count in favor of a parent, like for the parent to be truthful and not hide anything and, and transparency. So if you don't do that in a CPS case, that counts against you. And it's always frowned upon that you're withholding something, you're not being transparent, you're not giving them the information that they are looking to get. So what happens with what, what I can see is that here you have the CPS investigation, but you potentially and hypothetically speaking, um, you know, you, you have something criminal that's simmering behind the scenes. So anything 
that the wells may be asked of CPS that they say, that information could be provided to the police, and that would be for the initiation of a criminal investigation against them. But, and then on the other hand, it's also possible that a criminal investigation of what prompted them to become involved. But either way, the most important thing to remember here, it, at least what in my mind, is that the statements they make to the CPS investigator can be used against them in a criminal case. So my feeling on all of this, hearing that they have uh, possibly have attorneys, you know, it's been reported and um, I tend to believe um, Sheriff Lawson when he said that they have representation, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if they have a family lawyer who is also skilled in criminal defense. And that's not uncommon because the two cases are parallel to each other, but obviously if you're found um, the investigation for abuse and neglect is founded, that will be turned over to the police. It becomes criminal. But here, like, we don't know. We don't know really why the boys were even taken. And we can say that what we think and speculate, but we really don't know because it always comes down to that one thing that we don't really know much factually in the case. Right. But I definitely think that they probably have some sort of representation. And I definitely think that um, in a CPS case, they, they do not have the right to have a legal aid attorney, like a public defender. Um, the children, of course, have, have rights to counsel. Um, and I think in this case, it's a guardian ad litem. And, you know, and, and those also, at the conclusion of a case, a parent will be expected to pay the cost back to a court, by the way, for those services of that person or so, persons, because there might be three in this case. So um, she, so, so in the CPS case, do you believe that they weren't offered a lawyer through the courts? I suspect that they were not because in a CPS case, if we're talking about just, you know, the, the CPS case in juvenile court there in Tennessee, they don't have a right as a parent to an assigned counsel because it's not a criminal charge yet. So the criminal charge would be handled differently that would go to the DA's office and then at that point if they're charged with something then yes if, if they qualify then they can get a public defender or legal aid whatever you call it in your jurisdiction of course and they're entitled to that because everybody's entitled to that in a criminal case um, so it's possible but I, I really feel like there's probably a pro bono attorney out there if they didn't hire their own and and if they did hire their own attorney right now it's a there's a gag order on the case so we don't know who's representing them or not representing them. So they maybe have hired an attorney for all we know, right. but that's not going to be known to us unless they want it to be known to us or, you know, the attorney comes out and says, Hey, I'm representing them. We have no way of knowing. That. But why would, I mean, but why would Lawson just flat out say that they're not cooperating and that they have lawyers? I mean, he's not going to lie about that. Is yeah. he? Yeah, no, I, I believe what he's saying. Um, I know there's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of chatter about it, but, Personally, in my experience, I don't think that you're going to see um, a member of law enforcement, particularly like the sheriff of the county, say something like that unless, um, you know, there's truth behind that. Yeah. So I think that they most likely do have some sort of counsel, but it's not a far stretch of the imagination um, that they have a pro bono attorney who's just taking this case because they believe in the, the people or that they believe in justice or, you know, there's lots of criminal defense attorneys out there. Don't they have to do a certain amount of pro bono work? Do both. Um, you know what? In in some states they do, um, but I'm licensed in New York, and New York, you you're supposed to, and you have to report it biannually and whatnot. Um, but there's probably a lot of attorneys who don't. Yeah, and um, can you imagine like the, they're doing pro bono work, but they they don't really care about the case? Um, I yeah, I always exactly. found it funny, like the translators in court. They're like, they, they get somebody up there and it's like, what if, what if you're translating and you just hate the guy and you think he's guilty and they're like, you know, Hey, siento sente, siento sente. And he goes, well, you know what? He says he did it. You know, I, I sometimes I wonder about that too. <laughs> and they're hauling off. What? I didn't know I didn't, you know, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah they just they, they're like, yeah, I'll take, I'll take that case. Uh, well, you're guilty. You should probably just turn yourself in. Um, that's, that's pro bono that there's your pro bono work for the day. <laughs> yeah, call it a day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think they're wrapping it up. Yeah. I think that they're wrapping, intertwining them as well. I mean, 
CPS yeah. can't charge them with anything. Right. Right. You know, they, they will just complete their investigation and present that to the judge and decide what to do. And, um, you know, and we just don't know. And I did, um, I was following this case very, very closely in the beginning and I was making transcripts, believe it or not, of some of the statements that, that Don had said and, um, and that Candace had said to the media and whatnot. And there was a moment that in the very beginning where there was mention by Don Wells himself of the CPS case. And he did say that there was, he made, and I don't know his exact words, uh, but he said something to the effect of, um, you know, we, we were wrapping up a CPS case or something and he alludes to drug use. So there was definitely some sort of a pending case. I don't think it's publicly, you know, there's a record of it. I mean, unless I'm mistaken, I've never seen a, a public record of a former case out there. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's all confidential. But again, like, I just think that there's, there's probably so much more to what was going on prior to this and then what happened subsequent. It's just impossible to, to try to unravel it without having more facts. So yeah. And I, I, we get back. I think that's done yeah. obviously <laughs> on purpose. I, I, I would hope so, yeah. but um, that, you know, Absolutely. I think that they're going to say the same thing over and over until any charges are going to be brought. They're going to say, you know what, we're kind of in the same spot that we're at. Well, publicly, yes. Um, but you can't tell yeah. me that they haven't gone through, like he said, binders of information and not oh, yeah. know more than we do uh, in this oh, case. Yeah. They know <laughs> they when the DA said that there are implications of crimes, but I don't know what to charge basically with yet. Um, and yeah. they will bring stuff to me and I will recommend to them what we can do. They just seem like they haven't gotten there yet. And, uh, yeah. they sometimes, uh, you know, this better than anybody, it does take time. I mean, you got, you oh, yeah. want to be able, they're not going to just willy nilly throw them up there, uh, you know, indict them on something, uh, for them to right. just get away with it. And right. exactly. that's just not how it's going to exactly. happen. So I, like yeah, you said, I CPS totally doesn't, that. that CPS doesn't charge people with crimes. They turn it over to investigators. Exactly. So that's right. hopefully exactly. that's what we're waiting for. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things. People are so fascinated by the summer Wells case because of all the, the, the tentacles of it, how, how weird, how, weird the family is how um impoverished they seem to have been the other kids getting taken their kids before that getting taken there's so much it's like um yeah. what is a it's like an artichoke you know and, and you're just waiting <laughs> to get to the heart of it and um hopefully we the, the heart of it is is summer and hopefully that we can get some answers um, and that this little girl yeah, and her, whatever, whatever has happened. And, you know, I've never been shy about telling people how I feel about it. And I hope that I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Somebody the other day was saying like, oh, is it so impossible? Like what? Like I'm not giving up hope. Well, I'm not giving up hope either, but I, I also know uh, statistics and yeah. And Definitely. I'm praying for a miracle because that's what it is. That's all it would be. It wouldn't be like, yeah, you know, she's yeah, like, this happens all the time. She's alive somewhere. No, it doesn't. It absolutely doesn't yeah. happen all the time. And yeah, no, definitely. And the longer this goes on, it's a struggle to, you know, say, I got to have hope. I, I, keep, I tell myself that all the time. And every month that goes by, I think I got to have hope here. I can't lose the hope, you know, but <laughs> But I know what you're saying. Like, it's a very tough pill to swallow because of, you know, the statistics surrounding something like this. It's hard. Yeah, it, it is absolutely. I is. hope we get answers and if necessary, justice. I um, hope so, too. And thank you for calling. Yeah. I appreciate that. And I hope you call in again. Absolutely. Uh, what do you think of All this? Right, what do you think of this sure. format? You like it? I love it. Yeah. It's awesome. I love listening to everybody and their perspectives and the thoughts they have. It's fantastic. And hearing about these different cases too. It's great. Yeah, it is. It's, it's nice hearing from the people that, uh, uh, you know, hearing a voice to a lot of these, uh, 
names yeah, and stuff. Definitely it's, kind of say, oh, that's who I'm talking to all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody gets to hear my voice all the time. So it, it is, it is nice to be able to uh, communicate with people and, and let yeah. them bounce there. And everybody that's called, you know, that I haven't really had any conspiracies or I'm sure that'll, that'll come at some point but uh, yeah, i was hoping that i would be able to hear that music i'm like i love that song oh it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna happen it maybe not tonight but I, I i can guarantee that it will happen that's why i have it so <laughs> you can boot me off with it if you really want no way <laughs> i save that for the i save that for the the worthy but i appreciate you calling thank right. you so much <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay bye-bye oh, bye-bye well, what do you think? Have we come to the end? I'm not wishing for anything. I'm prepared for it, but it will happen. No, you don't like that call. I don't like that call. Not a very good call. I just can't wait. I'm not wishing for it, but it'll happen. Hey now. Uh, anybody ever watch the Larry Sanders show? Hey now. I, I used to love the Larry Sanders show. It was so funny. Hey now. I expected at least one UFO. Um, I don't know who that is. Duh, 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 duh. Well, uh, I got a call coming in. It's up to you. Do I answer the call? One, answer it. Two, end it. I got, uh, let, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Do I stay on one more? Do I have one more in me? Caller, go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Dorothy and I am calling pertaining to uh, Summer Wells case. Okay. Sure. It's on your mind. Okay, you're going to have to bear with me because I've never in my life did a live call. Uh, I, I will so. absolutely bear with you. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's, there's something that uh, has been on my mind a long time. Uh, I've been following the case since the beginning. But, uh, you know, when you watch a lot of creators, and, of course, they're all showing videos, and... Um, well, this video pertains to a conversation between Summer and her mother. And uh, it was not played often at all. So anyway, otherwise I would have called right away. Um, at the time, so perhaps you could, you'd be able to fill in the blank. With, if you feel this information from the video can help the case, I don't know if you could find out what creator actually played it because I was following all the creators. Uh, okay, now that I said that, um, I'm going to tell you what was said on the video between Candace and, and Summer. I just want to say one thing that judging from the voices, Summer had to see something or heard something because she sounded afraid when, when she spoke to uh, her mother. Um, I do know that Don was not home at the time. I believe he was in Utah. And uh, the, uh, okay, so as I said, that, uh, some, Summer sounded afraid, told her mother she won't tell. And as a matter of fact, her mother said something. I I, I didn't catch it all. Because what I'm telling you, it's from memory. Um, and then uh, Summer told her mother, I'll stop talking now. And uh, C C Candace was calm all the time, all right, the, you know. And uh, whatever she said to her daughter, I know that she ended with, got born. And 
shortly after that, <laughs> well, you know what happened. Summer got gone. Um, yeah, I, you know what? I don't, I haven't seen this video. Um, trying to, I'm trying to think. Uh, I remember a video where they were driving. I think it was in a truck or something on, on the freeway. And she was upset um, with summer and said something, but I'm not familiar with that video. So if anybody is familiar with it, uh, go ahead and, and just email it to me and, and uh, mods throw the email up in the um, uh, chat. That way, you know, we can have some context and then uh, maybe on the next show uh, on the next call in show, we can, we can go over that. Yeah. Because to me, it, it's very, to me, it's very valuable information. The only thing is that they're not whoever showed played it. In other words, whatever creator, I don't know because as I said, it happened many months ago. Uh -huh. Well, and if it's out there, I, somebody that's watching will know and email it to me. Uh, if it's still, you know, I mean, if it, unless it's a one-off that somebody deleted or, uh, you know, hopefully, usually think things like this are right because I'm so tired of watching the same videos over about you know the uh, interview you know with on the porch or at the, the the you know the watering area you know where they supposedly went swimming you know what I mean but sometimes you will catch a video that you'll see it once or maybe twice and like nobody plays it anymore yeah. It kind of gets lost in the you know? ether. Yeah. Yeah. I know. You, I know right. exactly what you mean by that. Um, so that's, that's it, why I'm so happy that I finally got you, you know, and uh, I don't you. have modern technology. That's why I can't jump on. I have to, you know, thank God you, you're doing live callings now, you know, it makes it easier for so people. Any, yes. Uh, yeah. So anyway, um, I, I, I'm not aware of, you know, of the uh, uh, law enforcement. I mean, I don't, you know, that's none of my business. But in other words, I don't know if they check, you know, the creators, uh, you know, videos or whatever you call them, you know. Yeah. But to me, as I said, it, it sort of goes together. Bottom line is what we do know is that Summer, well, her mother supposedly was the last to see her. She did disappear on her mother's watch, and uh, and I just feel I hope that uh, I'm not saying innocent, you know. I'm not going into it, you know. I've heard enough theories, and it's driving me nuts. You know, I think we need more than a theory now. And so I hope. And you're you're just hope, you're looking for the video, like you're wondering you you've only seen it once, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, another one, but the one that I, the one where, well, we didn't actually show Candace or Summer, but I know the one you're talking about in the car. That they, I know I saw that more than once. Not, not, you know, a lot, but the one that I'm telling you about, uh, I believe they were in their home. It never actually, the video didn't actually show them. But you heard, you know, the conversation. Right. So, right. Anyway. Yeah. Well, look, we'll see if uh, that's something that uh, somebody recognizes and, and is out there. And uh, if so, we'll uh, um, we'll try and take a look at it next week. How's that? I I, I feel a lot better. Believe me. I mean, yeah. whether it turns out to be something or nothing, uh, at least I got it off my chest because it really was bothering me well i absolutely appreciate you calling thank you and and where are you calling from what state well i see your area code is 718 and that's what my area code used to be i'm originally from uh, brooklyn new york yeah very cool and yeah well my, all my life brooklyn new york and uh presently uh i'm at uh, i'm in orlando florida very nice i just made 
I just made a year here. A lot different from Brooklyn, New York, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's probably night and I day. Came, I, I came for the weather, you know, because uh, I go we hate it winter. But it, it is so different living here that uh, I'm not even enjoying the weather, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's um... it, 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 it coming a right at the what would you call it, a residential area? And uh, you got to walk quite a bit to get to a store. And uh, good old Brooklyn, New York, you didn't have to walk forever to get there. You know what I mean? Yeah, Brooklyn. So. <laughs> Love that. Okay. Well, thank you so much it, it for was- calling. Uh, hopefully, I'll have something. Uh, maybe we can find that video. And then um, next week, we can we can revisit that. Oh, there's another video also. Um, it, this one they keep playing all the time at the what do they call it the water hole or yeah. whatever where they supposedly you know one swimming. Um, uh, they 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 keep showing like the same, but you know when something gets left out. Um, uh, at the time, well, for, uh, at the time it was Candace and Hunter who were both um right by the water. Okay, Summer was in the water at the time. But they were really right on the borderline of the water. They were facing each other and they were doing their, what is it called, TikTok or whatever. Uh-huh. And uh, then what happened was Hunter, now this was all video, in other words, you know, tape, I'm watching it happen. And uh, he happened to face some, you know, like he took a glance or say, over his shoulder. And at the time, she was in the water face down but but her her face in other words had to be like right on the top of the water it's not like you know her head you know sunk in the water mm. and he did take off whatever top he was wearing and he jumped in that water immediately and uh she was fine at the time so yeah. but as i said they were right by the water they, 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 there's only like a few you know she was very close to the to the summer was very close to the uh, to the land I'll call it, and uh, her mother and Hunter, as I said, they were on their TikToks, and they didn't have to he didn't have to do any running, you know what I mean? It was just like a few steps. He took off whatever the top he was wearing, he jumped right in the water, right, right, and he got her he got her out. They don't show that anymore. That part I don't know why, but. Yeah, I, I don't think that she important. was watched well ever. I don't I don't think that yeah. that that summer had the proper um supervision that she needed. Uh, prob- the boys probably the same way. And I feel like that is possibly uh, a huge part of her demise. Um in in my opinion, and I hope I'm wrong about that, but um there just seems to be all kinds of weird you know you know when she said oh i walked her over to the I, she didn't walk she didn't walk anybody over anywhere i just i don't she's not that kind of mother obviously um now there are mothers that definitely would do that and should do that but like what what mother walked i mean it's just a few steps right i mean it's not that right. far it's within it's a, it's within you know uh, earshot um, and then, you know, she makes it seem like she said, oh yeah, we, I walked her over there and told her, Hey boys, uh, uh, watch your sister. I mean, I just don't see any of that happening, uh, ever. And so that's just, you know, my opinion about it. So, um, anyway, but thank you so much for calling. I appreciate that. And we will, uh, see what we can dig up. Yeah, well, I, I realize. I just want to say one thing, one other sure. thing. I don't want to take too much of your time because I know there are other people who would like to say something. <laughs> no problem. But uh, anyway, uh, as far as the parents go, you, I'm just going to make it real brief. Uh, I mean, I, I've never seen a case like this in all my life, all right? Uh, I'm 72 years old, and I followed many cases, but this one is the wildest. Uh, the most unbelievable. Yes. And, uh, you know, there's, 
I don't understand how you could get so many liars all in the same area. <laughs> you know? Well, the, so, the, they, but, they seem to have done it somehow. <laughs> they made it, they made it happen. And, it, and so many suspects, I mean, you know, and uh, uh, this little girl, I mean, look, I don't know any of these people. This little girl just really sold my heart. Okay. Uh, she's very lovable. And um, I realized the longer that she's missing, you know, of course it doesn't sound good, but um I'm I'm keeping uh, faith alive, and and uh, I do hope that uh, only because no body has been found yet. Okay, so that I'm still trying to be positive, and hope that uh, she uh, is still alive and somewhere safe. I'm, I'm looking really for a happy ending. I am as well. I am as well. So anyway, well, thank you so oh, much. I, I thank you. I thank you so much for hearing me out and uh, I hope it, I, I hope it helps. In other words, what I, you know, brought to your attention, even and this, believe it or not, just yeah. <laughs> believe it or not, just one other thing. I know I saw it with uh, Candace and Dawn. I mean, even though, I mean, look, their lifestyle is a lot different than, you know, than what I grew up in and uh, what's normal for them, I guess, you know, isn't, normal for me mm -hmm. but believe it or not they do have a streak in them that i like them they seem like they very well could be likable people i don't yeah. know if anybody else feels that way probably not but uh, <laughs> <laughs> well anyway all right well th again, thank right. you so I much i you anymore and thank you oh. for listening to me Okay. Bye bye. And nice, very nice meeting you. Also. Nice meeting you as well. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, this 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 will be the last one. I took because this person has been trying to get through, and they're waiting. So let's do it. Caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Thanks for waiting. And thanks for taking my call. I uh, I got an Amazon package here. Uh, looks like it's a box of corn dogs. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's up, Chris? <laughs> what's going on, I, dude? I a, seriously, I got a case of corn dogs here. I got like four of them in the microwave tonight. I do. And I'm hammering these things, dude. I, I love this format. I knew I should have. I should have ended it uh the last caller and i you know i just i don't know what it was but uh that's awesome and yeah it, it hasn't it been great yeah this is great i was just calling to make sure i'm on uh, with you tomorrow night right we're absolutely gonna, gonna do it absolutely we are all right yeah well, I, awesome it, yeah uh, so y have you have you caught any of this a little bit yeah i did it, it this is great. Yeah, I mean, this, no, I've, I've, I've enjoyed it thoroughly. Exactly what the community needs. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. And people, yeah. everybody that has called has been, been so great. I haven't even, have you heard the, the dump button that I have? Maybe I'll use it for you, but, um, <laughs> so, so when a caller gets a little out of line, I hit him with this. I haven't had to use it tonight. Thank God. But uh, it's there just in case yeah. we need it. And you're on tomorrow at uh, 7 Eastern, correct? Yep, 7 Eastern. We're going to run through the Delphi situation. And then after That's that, you'll, you'll be in the lab. So awesome. That sounds great, I'll Chris. Be with, I'll be with the rats. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you real fast, you know, seriously, I, I do have a case of these I don't know what they're what they're called here, but they're like little mini corn dogs. I, I, and love I figured you, you know, yeah, you're gonna wanna you wanna gonna want you're gonna want these. So I'm, my stomach's uh, growling as I as as you speak. It's a uh, love a good corn dog. I'll tell you that. All right, all right buddy. All right, hey, Chris. lab rats. See you guys later. I will catch you tomorrow, bud, because I know it's late. Awesome. Thanks so much, Chris. Uh, all right, dude. All right. Good job. Yeah, outstanding. This is very, very cool. Good Thank for you. you.
Thank you. Appreciate it. And I'm up late. I got to go take my Geritol. <laughs> Yeah, how that rolls. <laughs> I, I actually don't yet, but I hope to one day know. All right. Man. See ya. Bye. Bye, All right. Well, there it was. Uh, we finished off with the the uh, McDonn awesome, awesome night. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Somebody sent a, and I don't want to miss that. I Let's see here. Let's see what this is. Uh, Sherry says, "Is there any, has there been any info on what Candace is up to? I don't think there's been any official word, but I'm guessing it's not looking for her missing daughter, um, unfortunately. And um, I, I, I've heard that she's not at the hill, but I don't. I, I honestly, I don't know. Um, it's sad." I'll tell you that. Make sure to hit the like button, uh, subscribe on the way out. I appreciate everybody uh, coming over and, and watching, trying out this new format. It's fantastic. And um, you, the callers are, are, are so, you guys are so great. The chat, fantastic as always. Thank you guys for being here. Enjoy your Saturday night. Um, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. Uh, the interview room at uh, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific or specific. And right after that, you head on over right here to the lab. Uh, the link will be up tonight. Make sure to hit the notification bell. Make sure that you're getting notified. So thank you guys again. And, um, I'll see you tomorrow. There is no investigation. This boy has... There is not. Really? It is to me. Don't say any F's and stuff. But I have to put her... on the side. In where I'm going to do what it. I got to do for me and my boys and my kids. Don't say any F's and stuff. There is no investigation. This boy has... There is not. Really? It is to me. Right. I've done my best. It's hard, you know, it's actually real tough. But I have to put her on the side and worry about the boys. I'm going to do what I got to do for me and my boys and my kids. Don't say any F's and stuff. Live from the NBD Production Studios, you're in the lab with your host, Joshua Diaz. There is no investigation. This boy has it's not. Really? It is to me. But I have to put her on the side and worry about the boys. But I have to... There is no investigation. Don't say any absence, though. But I have to put her... But I have to put her on the side and worry about the boys.